what you're looking at is called a liminal space. Images of familiar places like malls and hotels that are completely devoid of human life. They give off a very unique feeling, like uneasiness and nostalgia mixed with the idea that you're seeing something that you probably shouldn't. Like an empty playground or a room that structurally doesn't make any sense. But what is a liminal space? And more importantly, why do they evoke such a unique feeling? I love liminal photos. They're just so interesting to me. The feeling that they give off is unlike anything that I've ever seen before. With so many different variations and location types, it really is one of the more unique pieces of internet media. So in today's video, not only will I explain and explore what makes a liminal photo so unique, but also go to four separate locations and use the information that I've gathered to create my very own. This is how I created liminal photos. Now, liminal photos have actually been around for a while, but slowly gained more and more popularity due to the creation of the Backrooms Creepypasta in 2019. But what is a liminal photo, I hear you asking? You see the f I forgot I can't see out of this thing. Liminality. So if you look up right now what is a liminal space, you're gonna find, well, a lot of answers. From what I've seen, there's really no exact definition of what a liminal space is. Because first you got liminal spaces, but then you also got transitional spaces, and then you got liminal zones, which may or may not be the exact same thing, but they can't photos be the same thing because some photos by definition cannot be transitional so spaces. Are they called? So why are they called transitional spaces? I think the main reason why a lot of people can't narrow down one singular definition is because I don't think a lot of people realize is that there's more than one type. From what I have found, there are three, t three types of liminal photos. Transitional, nostalgic, and uncanny. Transitional photos are the most prevalent type of liminal photo. It also just so happens to be the first definition that you see if you look up what a liminal space is. Hallways, airports, and grocery stores. Places that you've been to multiple times but have no concrete memory of. Because they're transitional spots, places that you don't stay in for long periods of time. They're the places between point A and point B. Like, do you vividly remember the last time you went to, say, a gas station? Or what was going through your head the last time you walked through any hallway? Probably not, because they're really not important. Which is why seeing a picture of a mall, which is usually flourishing with people, completely empty, so eerie. Or an office without cubicles or desks, also just as off-putting. Because you barely remember these places, seeing them without their defining qualities, it almost feels wrong. Like you're seeing something that you're not supposed to. Which makes sense, because if you're in a poorly lit mall at night completely devoid of human life, either A, you're Paul Blart, or B, you're not supposed to be there. But then we have nostalgic, which is essentially the exact opposite of transitional photos. Transitional photos prey on what little you remember, but nostalgic photos prey on what you do. Now, really quickly, since we're on the topic of nostalgia, I need to talk about the man who inspired me to make this video, and his name is Alpha Oxtrot. He made a video on liminal spaces around a year ago, and it is absolutely fantastic. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. It's also one of the first videos that pops up when you look up liminal photos, so that's kind of neat. Nice job, team. Anyway, in the video, he talks very heavily about the nostalgic feeling of some of these photos. But I feel like he only scratched the surface. All of these photos do, to an extent, evoke a sense of nostalgia, but not in the way that you think. But I'll get into that more in my conclusion. But with nostalgic images specifically, they really are just that. Nostalgia. Schools, houses, and playgrounds. Places that you have been in for long periods of time and have happy or sad memories of. But concrete memories nonetheless, and that's the point. Instead of eerie, these images more give me a strong sense of loneliness. Kind of like that feeling of sadness you get when driving past a place you used to hang out with your friends or significant other. It's a very specific kind of loneliness. Uh, in fact, here's a better example. Think of a birthday party any birthday party that you've ever had. To me, these images are a visual representation of the feeling you get when all the guests leave. One of my most vivid birthday memories was the night after my 17th birthday party. I woke up in the middle of the night to get a glass of water, and when I walked into the other room to see all the birthday decorations still up, that feeling of loneliness is almost exactly like what I feel when I look at these photos. Because unlike transitional photos, not only do I remember how these places look, 
but I remember exactly what I felt. But then we have uncanny photos, and these are by far my favorite. Essentially a combination of the first two with one major difference, distortion. Places that are and aren't familiar, like pools and neighborhoods, but they're distorted. Changed in uncomfortable ways, like architecture that doesn't make any sense, or in a way being oversimplified, like a creepy wallpaper on an old computer. They feel almost dreamlike, like they're lost memories. Like, have you ever had a moment where you remembered something random from your childhood? Like a movie or a song, and then you find it and realize it's almost nothing like how you remember? And to me, I feel like these images are a visual representation of that feeling. Nothing is ever exactly like how we remember it, which is how two people can remember a situation in two completely different ways. Because sadly, that's just time. Whenever you think of a moment or a place, little by little, it changes. Like making a copy of a copy. So going back to our first question, what is a liminal photo? And how can three seemingly different images give off the exact same feeling? One word. One word that brings all of this together. The one thing that these three completely different images have in common. And that word is memory. Liminal spaces are memories, and each type of photo represents a specific kind of memory. Transitional, the spaces in between, places that you have a vague recollection of. They're essentially forgotten memories. But then you have nostalgic, places that you have a vivid memory of. Places and moments that you'll most likely remember and cherish forever. And finally, we have the uncanny, the decay of memories. None of our memories are 100% exactly like what happened, and over time, all of our memories are, in some way, going to be different. Either completely decayed and forgotten, or simplified, losing some pieces along the way. And that's what makes luminal photos so interesting. They make you recognize time. Like when you're looking through old photos of your family, or when you turn 18 and realize you don't have to lie about your age on the internet anymore. It's those little moments when you look back and realize, I'm older. You might not realize it, but it's really easy to live in the moment throughout your life. Not thinking about the past while also not being concerned about the future. What liminal photos do is remind you that not only does time exist, but it will always move forward. And that our memories will sadly never be able to catch up. So yeah, that's what a liminal photo is. We have all of our data, and now we can finally but hold on champ, we gotta set some rules first. Now I did get some of these rules from Alpha's video, but I did add a few more. Thank you again Alpha for guiding me this far. Okay, I can't see. Rule number one, bad or perfect lighting. There's really no in between. It really just depends on the location. Also changing the color from red to yellow or green also helps a lot. Rule number two, grain slash noise. It makes the image feel a lot more old and authentic, like a picture that your mom took in the 80s. And then finally, rule three. The selected location must be in either very clean or just good condition. There's a reason why you don't get a feeling of liminality when looking at a picture of a mall or house that's trashed. The area that you take a picture of needs to feel like it was being used or was abandoned that very second. Pretty simple to follow rules in all honesty, but now let's talk about equipment. Finding a good bad camera was a lot harder than I thought it would be. And out of... All of these cameras, only this one phone worked. For a day. When it did work, this 2000 something AT&T camera made the perfect garbage photos. But then it just died, I guess. So for the rest of this video, I'm gonna be using my regular phone and then making the photos worse in Photoshop. Now for the lighting, I'm actually just gonna use one of my studio lights because they have an external battery pack and relatively easy to transport. But the main reasons why I'm using them is because not only are they surprisingly very bright, but I can actually change them in the various colors using the app on my phone. So now I can get way more out of the raw photos themselves. But now for the most important part, the locations. So you can, hold on, not enough room. Can you see it? Now I actually have four separate locations in mind. The first is a school. Now my aunt just so happens to be a school teacher and said that after hours would be perfect. Yeah, I don't need these anymore. 
not only are schools very heavy on nostalgia, but they also have plenty of empty hallways and a crap ton of classrooms. Not to mention anything that involves children is automatically creepy. You know, like drawings, dolls, Doc McStuffins, nursery rhymes, that blippy guy? All creepy. Next is a church. I talked to my bishop and he said as long as we stay out of the chapel, we're fine. Now, like the school, it has plenty of hallways and classrooms, but most of the classrooms in the church are pretty much completely empty. The thing that I'm most excited for is the gym. Now, it's pretty huge, but it also has a lot of dimmable lights, so I'm thinking I can get a lot of good photos in there. It also has plenty of chairs. I bring this up because sometimes liminal photos have chairs set in really weird ways. I'm thinking I could use that to my advantage. Next, we have parks. Now, this one's gonna be a little tricky. Most liminal photos that are outside are usually during the summer and have plenty of grass. It is currently February as of recording this, and there is plenty of snow outside, but I'm willing to take this challenge. I haven't really seen a lot of snowy liminal photos, so I think this should be pretty interesting. Obviously, they're heavy nostalgia. The architecture is always weird because it is a park and it's aimed towards kids. Also, there's plenty of variety. Also, sometimes there's like weird statues and stuff there or things that are made to look like animals or people, you know, basic creepy stuff. I have a bunch of different parks in mind, so hopefully I'll get at least one good photo. And finally, we have the mall. The mall that I am thinking of actually has a movie theater and they play movies from like 12 to even one in the morning. So I'm thinking that I'll just watch a movie really late and then while I'm leaving, I'll just take a couple quick photos. I don't wanna stay there too long though because I, I guess that is technically trespassing. Large hallways, dark because it will be technically after hours. And they also have a huge ice rink that I think could be a good photo. So, you know, that's something. I won't be there for too long, obviously. So I'm just aiming for at least one good photo. Now, I actually did have another idea where I would go into the woods with some furniture. Every now and then I'd see a pretty interesting liminal photo of just having random stuff in the woods. But yeah, I'm not gonna do that. It would just be too much work. And I don't even know where I would ever do that. Uh, also, woods are scary. So yeah, these are the locations. I'm hoping to get at least one good photo from each location, because that would... Four good photos, yeah. If I do, I will call that a victory. All right, enough talk. Let's do this. Now, I actually did end up vlogging a couple of times, but uh, I didn't really add anything, and uh, also the audio was uh, uh, pretty terrible. And it's starting with the school first. So I'm just gonna be doing some light voiceover. creepy at all. I think it went well. The school was a great place to start off with. The hallways and classrooms that I had access to were just absolutely perfect. I did try and get some bathroom photos, but they were uh, pretty, pretty garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't really find bathrooms all that liminal, in all honesty, so I just don't think I'm going to be trying to get those anymore. Pretty deep, huh? <laughs> Crap. After dressing up for the inevitable cold, we set out and besides nearly freezing to death, it actually went pretty well. With the help of my friend, we ended up visiting three parks and it was actually pretty fun. The snow was definitely very annoying, but each park was unique in their own way, providing many different opportunities for photos. However, this was the park that I was most excited for. Ooh, that's a good one. The slide was made to look like a polar bear and at night it looks really freaking creepy. They may look cute and cuddly, but trust me, polar bears are as dangerous as they come. I did have to climb on top of it to get the snow off of the eyes, but the end result was definitely worth it. Also pretty lucky, but we found these while driving around abandoned carnival rides, I guess? Some of them are covered up, but I couldn't say no to an opportunity like this. So besides getting frostbite, it couldn't have gone any better. Now, when we arrived, the gym was unfortunately being used by another group of people. But like I anticipated, pretty much all of the classrooms were empty. Almost every single room that I went into was pretty much perfect, resulting in probably my favorite photos from either of the four locations. However, in the moment, we did go a little crazy with the red lighting. It did look really cool, but not really liminal. 
Some liminal photos can retain their liminal feeling, but besides one photo that I took, the rest were just kinda cool looking. In the end though, the church was easily the best location that I went to. So the movie ended around 1 in the morning, and as expected, pretty much no one was there. We ended up walking around for maybe less than 10 minutes. Cause like, yeah, I'd strongly prefer to be on a mall cop's good side. We parked at the farthest entrance, so while we were walking through the mall, we could take some quick photos along the way. We only got a few good photos, but we were on a bit of a time crunch. Got it. All right, the pictures are finally done, and before I go on, let me just say thank you for watching this video. It was an absolute blast to make, and I actually got to go outside for once, so that's pretty neat. So without further ado, here are my liminal photos. I hope you enjoy.